friends. Welcome to Coding Garden. Uh, I'm CJ, and today we are going to be trying out Nuxt 3. Uh, so this is the second episode in a series where we are trying a bunch of full stack frameworks and evaluating them, and mostly evaluating uh, the ecosystem around these full stack frameworks. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, Kodaf ha has a good question, but it, it kind of ties into why we're specifically trying SvelteKit, Nux, Remix, and Next.js. So all four of these uh, backend frameworks are, like, full-featured frameworks uh, that uh, include a lot of things. More, sp more specifically, they include uh, hybrid rendering, like server-side rendering versus single-page application, um, uh, and they have the potential to create like fully static apps and stuff like that. So that's really what these frameworks are giving you. And you get the best of all the worlds, right? So whatever app you're building, these frameworks figure out how to render them in the right way, uh, which is why we're not just using just view or just felt. Yeah, so server-side rendering, client-side rendering, single page application, it figures out the right thing to do, uh, which is why there's like a, a lot of other full like back end or full stack frameworks that don't fit into this because um, they like pair an API piece with a front end piece. So these all of these frameworks specifically give you that hybrid rendering aspect. Um, and they have a lot of opinions about uh, routing and how to do like API functions and, and stuff like that. Uh, I think these are literally the first words I have spoken today. So <laughs> my voice has to warm up. Uh, I'm I'm probably I'm probably a little bit tired, but I'm not sick. I just have to warm up. That's all. But thank you, thank you for noticing BTRSL. But we're here. We're here. Welcome in, everybody. Glad to have you. Uh, I know there, there's a lot of uh, new people, first timers in the chat. I appreciate you all for for coming over. I think a lot of you found me either on Twitter or on my my Dev Two post. So I appreciate you for coming over. And uh, Shark Turnup, thank you for the 11 month resub. Uh, and Killex, thank you for that Prime sub. Much appreciated on that. Um, uh, we used Twinned in uh, Dino Fresh because uh, we worked in an app on this for a long time. Uh, Electrothermal, thank you for that resub. I've been meaning to tell you, Electrothermal, we put smoke detectors all over our house. <laughs> I, I, the, the last time you were here, I was like, there's something I need to tell you, but I forgot. But we went out. We already had some. So we had smoke detectors. Some of them were sitting like on the top of bookshelves and some of them were like sitting on uh, counters and stuff like that. But we, we put them properly like in the middle of the room and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. Uh, when we were doing it, I thought of you because I remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, welcome in, Lance. It's cool. It's cool to hear that Twitch is suggesting me on the front page as well. But yeah, we, we did some work in Fresh and it actually, whenever you generate an app, it asks if you want to use Twinned. So we have used that. Uh, I do plan on using Tailwind today. Um, so yeah, a quick quick rundown of what we're actually going to be trying out, because we're we're not really even going to be spending much time figuring out like how does Nuxt do routing, or how does Nuxt do data loading or anything like that. We we will do it, but that's not our focus. Our focus is on the ecosystem, and first on project setup. So project setup is less about the ecosystem, but we really just want to see. Uh, do they have a CLI tool? What's it like generating a project? We're gonna, we're gonna see how easy it is to add Tailwind. A lot of uh, these frameworks have just a single command that you can run uh, to add Tailwind. So like with SvelteKit, there's Svelte Add, and we could easily add Tailwind. I think there's something similar for Nuxt. Uh, we wanna get a component library up and going. I think today we're actually gonna try out Daisy UI. I don't know if their documentation got updated, but Daisy UI looks different than the last time I looked at their docs, but I think we're going to try out Daisy UI. Um, then we're going to try to get social auth going. This one's going to be tricky. So like one of the, like Nux 3 was officially announced and released on uh, November 16th. That's when it officially went into stable. Um, it was in release candidate for a while before that and beta and alpha before that. Uh, but about a month ago, a little over a month ago, it went into stable, but all of the, the the rest of the ecosystem isn't necessarily caught up yet. Um, so there actually is a an official Nuxt auth package from the core team, but it doesn't support Nuxt 3 yet. There's a community package that's a wrapper around Next.js or Next auth, and I think we'll try that, but that's that's going to be interesting to see how that, that is handled. Yeah, and Nuxt use, uses file-based routing as well, and, and I'll t I guess I can show that whenever we get into it, but basically you create 
uh, pages within folders, and those automatically get mapped to routes. Yeah, so that's the one we're going to try, Killex, I think. If it, like, once we get going, and I mean, it's probably going to be like an hour before we get to this point. But when we get there, if there's any, like, Nuxt experts in the chat, I'd be, I'd be happy to hear your opinions on, um, do we use the one from Sidebase? Do we implement it from scratch? Because there, there there's some other options. Like, we don't necessarily have to use one of these full-featured auth packages, but I would prefer it. Like, I, I don't want to have to set cookies manually. I don't want to have to create sessions manually. Um... Honestly, I don't even want to have to insert users into my database manually because a lot of these, like like Next Auth, for instance, can handle all of that for you with a with a single single setup. So that's why I definitely want to want to find something like that. And then we'll we'll, we'll show off the full tech stack type safety. So full disclosure, I have dabbled with Nux three. I probably have like an hour and a half messing around with Nux three because I was building out a site with it. Um, so this is one of the things that I saw was really cool is that uh, once you start to build out like API routes. Uh, you get, you automatically get type completion inside of your components without the need for TRPC or anything like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you're right, Mihai Andre. Um, the only one that doesn't have a CLI is Next. I mean, Next technically has, like, a project generator, but there isn't a CLI that has more commands beyond just generating a project. Uh, whereas Nuxt has a CLI called uh, Nuxy or Nuxy. <laughs> Um, and it has commands that you can run to like add stuff to your app. But uh, that's the plan for today. We're going to be doing all of these things in the Nuxt ecosystem. And uh, we're going to be rating everything on a scale of 1 to 10. Uh, we, can we can look at my ratings for Svelte, which is what we did on Saturday. So Svelte Kit got a 10 out of 10 on project generation. They asked us a bunch of questions. The project was ready to go. Um, this piece, I'm, I'm almost like hesitant to even do this in any of the other frameworks because... Really, this is just me, right? It's not the framework's fault that I have <laughs> I have trouble setting up the linting config to work with how how I want to work it work with it. But I gave that a two out of ten because we spent a long time and we actually didn't get it working. Uh, Tailwind was super easy with Svelte. We gave that a ten out of ten, just easily at it. Um, component library setup. Uh, if you watched, it was a little bit tricky because we tried using Flowbyte first, and then we realized it didn't really work that well with. Um, uh, Svelte Kit. It works well with Svelte, but not Svelte Kit, because Svelte Kit does server-side rendering, and there's some things in there that make it tricky. Uh, so we scrapped that, and then we uh, tried to use Skeleton, which is uh, a pretty well-known library that uses Tailwind under the hood for UI, and that one was pretty good. We gave that a 7 out of 10, uh, I think mainly because I had some issues... Uh, honestly, a lot of anything that's not a 10 out of 10 is like my fault because I'm, I'm not good at following the docs. But the other thing we're doing as we go about this is we are uh, checking to see, like, are the docs clear? Um, is it easy to find things? And for me, setting up skeleton um, was a bit tricky. Uh, basic layout was also a bit tricky, but really this has nothing to do with Svelte Kit. It's more, more so to do with the library we're using skeleton. And then social auth is where we ran into big issues because... Um, there's Svelte Kit Auth, which is using Next Auth Core. So uh, Next Auth, the Auth package for Next.js, is in the process of extracting everything out into a core library so that it can be reused for other frameworks. They're calling it like Auth.js or Auth Core. Um, however, uh, it's broken. I mean, it's 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 uh, it's not even. Uh, I don't think it's even beta yet. It's, it is in pre-release, but specifically, we we ran into an issue with any provider that was OIDC, OpenI OpenID config, and uh, Google specifically is that, and then we couldn't get it working, so I got a zero out of ten. Um, but Svelte Kit also does have full stack type safety. So these were the ratings for Svelte Kit. We're gonna do a similar thing today for Nuxt. First off, let's welcome everybody in, and then we'll get into it. Yeah, so all, all of the streams get uploaded over to the YouTube archive. So if you go to the Coding Garden archive, um, uh, everything gets uploaded here. And actually, if you give me a second, I'll publish the Svelte Kit one. Um, because I forgot to do that. Uh, what command tab extension do I use? What do you mean, uh, Gravita? What do you can you clarify? <laughs> Hello, scene two. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, it's called Alt Tab. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. If you if you go check out um, this GitHub repo on my Mac setup, uh, the app is linked there. Um, yeah, yeah. It's called Alt Tab because it shows window previews. And I mean, I didn't it didn't register what you were asking because. I actually I do use Command Tab, but the app is called Alt Tab. But I had to go into the keyboard settings to change it to Command Tab. Um, we are here. We're here. We're here. And now it's published. Cool. So if you're uh, subbed over on the archive channel, uh, the stream from Saturday is uploaded now. But I mean. You can watch it later because you can watch watch this here and now, um, but uh, the it's on the archive channel, so go check it out. Um, all right, yeah, and 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 this is kind of the what I was talking about. I mean, this is also the case with like Svelte kits because Svelte kit reached one The framework itself, they like it's it's been overhauled. They updated the docs, good to go. But really, what we care about more so is the ecosystem, right? Like all of the packages that we're using with it. So that's going to be tricky. Um, yeah, I, I saw your email. I, I, um, my phone isn't set up to respond with that email, but I at least got the email. So thank you for that. I'll have to do some testing. Thank you. Thank you for reaching out. A Merry Christmas, Clicky Poo. It says Merry Christmas. <laughs> Open ID connect. Cool. I think I said that wrong. Um, I haven't tried GitHub Copilot. No, I probably should at some point. Um, It's the future. <laughs> it's the future. <laughs> um, all right. Let's say hello to everybody. If you would like me to say hello to you, you can say uh, hi, hello, hello, hey, yo, cheers, greetings, hi, what's up, what's up, morning, afternoon, evening, howdy, good day, coding, hi, fo, hi, or boga, hey. Say any one of these things. I will notice you. I will acknowledge you. And uh, we'll get right into it. Uh, and if you say, like, hi with two eyes or hey with, with two eyes, I'll actually miss it. So... Uh, just say hi if you really want me to say hi. Um, <clears throat> and uh, 27 minutes ago, uh, we had a first timer as the first person to say hello. That's cool. I don't know if this has ever happened. Uh, but but uh, Gborn, welcome in, or Gborn. And Regerson, hello, what's up, Demurka, and Moshiko, and Imdish Ubuntu, and An Anonymous Ace, hello, Turkler, uh, Barada, and uh, Yurigo, and Bacon Partner, and Clicky Poo, and Java Guy, and Shark Turn Up, and Vive, and hello, Mihai Andre, and Oscar, and BTRSL, hello, Fob, and Origin, and Part Time Mary, what's up, Ox Neo, and Decollars, and Imposter Engineer, and uh, Silver, and Fryman, and Oxdow, and Play with Fets, uh, and Play with Fetties. And Excavator, hello, uh, Mendoza, and Kravita, and PJ Keller, what's up, Electrothermal, Bolga, hey, hello, Eddie, and a uh, user with name one, and Allers, what's up, Pop Fluid, and Coding Garden fan, hello, aw, yes, and uh, uh, Stink, how's it going, what's up, Dr. Mumba, and Veritatas, and uh, Turafoon, and Practic, and X Palma, and V Fulton, and uh, Curabell, and James H. Dev, hello, Mortal Box, and Murdoch Turner, with two eyes, <laughs> what's up, Des V, and HTTP 404, hello, Macaroni Pizza Pie, and uh, Baj Bajanov, and uh, Need More Wood, hello, and thanks for that follow, Need More Wood, appreciate that. Uh, I think you followed. We can check, honestly. I feel like a lot of people have been following lately. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, you did. 30 minutes ago. Appreciate that. Um, and uh, Adrian, how's it going? What's up, Nookie Poo? And Marshall and Valk. Welcome in, everybody. Glad to have you. Welcome to the Coding Garden. We're going to write some code. I think we're going to get right into it. Like, there's no point in, in stalling. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking of Acid Spark is, you know, like, notice me, Simpile. How many hours have I planned today for the ESLint config? I'll have it done in 10 minutes. 10 minutes flat. The thing is, the ESLint config in view projects is actually really easy because they have a bunch of examples for getting it going. Um, but let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up a project. Uh, so let's go to the next documentation, click on getting started, and see what it tells us. We could read about it. I probably should read about it. But I just want to generate an app. So let's go to installation. Uh, we have Node and VS Code, and we have the view extension. Um, and we want a new project. So yeah, Nuxy or Nuxy. I want to say Nuxy because it is Nux, Nuxjs. Um, th this is the command line tool for doing all of the things. So we're going to init a project. 
and I guess uh, like a really quick background on um, uh, what we did last time. So right now we actually have this mono repo set up. Um, and the reason we have this mono repo set up is that in the packages folder, we have this DB library that is uh, just a simple little Prisma client um, that has all of our table definitions. And uh, we have this DB library here, and then all of our apps are going in the apps folder, and they can all access that DB library. So if I go into apps, um, docs and web were part of the monorepo generation. We could actually delete those, but the Svelte app is in here. So we're also going to put the... Um, the Nuxt app in this folder so that it has access to like the database package. So we're going to call this the uh, Nuxt example. Here we go. Yeah, and so <laughs> Veeb says the Nuxt CLI wasn't as good as the Vue CLI. So um, honestly, like it was super quick to generate this project, but it didn't ask me questions, right? It didn't say, do you want to use this or do you want to use that? Uh, which is what you get with like the, uh, the CLI for SvelteKit and uh, what you get for like the view CLI. Um, this is fine though. Like I think it comes with like good sensible defaults. So uh, let's go into our Nuxt example. It only has a couple of files. I mean, honestly, for a beginner, this is probably like way less overwhelming because you're like, oh wow, I literally just have one view file. Um, oh, I need to install dependencies. That's why I'm getting this VS Code error. Uh, <laughs> Um, but this is, I mean, honestly, this is cool because it's like, it's, it's, it's literally nothing. And then at the same time, it also forces you, if you're new to Nuxt, it forces you to go through the documentation to figure out like, where do things go? So, eh, I mean, I don't, I feel like it, there should be some options, right? There should be some options to generate the app with more things, right? Like I don't have an ES lint config. Um, I don't think. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's miss, missing a lot of stuff, but, uh, let's install dependencies. So just do an NPM I and, um, I'll also reload the VS code code window. So Vue does not use JSX. It uses, uh, HTML handlebars or mustache templates and custom directives. Um, you can use JSX with Vue. You can, if you want to, um, but it's not typical to do that. Um, yeah, and so the, um, yeah, Need More Wood makes some really good points. And, and like, this, these are things that I was discovering as I was trying to figure this stuff out the other day. Um, uh, what is it called? Sidebase? This is a third-party thing. This is a third-party thing, Sidebase. Um, it's not, like, it's not from the core team that does Nuxt, but... Uh, they have a bunch of things that try to like improve the CLI and stuff like that. So like they have a project starter that has all of the stuff that I was talking about. Um, they have that Nuxt auth, auth library I was talking about and all of this stuff. So we could use something like this, but I want to stick to the core library because that's what we're comparing everything else against. That said, we probably will end up using Nuxt auth separately, like not auto-generated. Um, but it is important to note that like this is in the ecosystem and it's like closer to what you're used to like because I think even the old like Nuxt version 2 had a CLI that asked a bunch of questions and gave you a bit more customization. Yeah, I think Angular does have a uh, question it asks you a bunch of questions when you're generating the app. <laughs> I just created a new Rails app and I have like 20 plus folders. Yeah, so. Um, ah, welcome in, Eddie. Glad to have you. Yeah, we're doing view only, but if you do have a Svelte question, um, someone in the chat can probably help. What happened to the Svelte project? Well, we're doing it one by one, but we, we scrapped Svelte because we couldn't get auth working with the library that was the main one. <laughs> so, <laughs> There's options on nux.new. Let's check it out. Well, is this for... Uh... Okay. Nux3, minimal starter with a single app.view. Starter for content-driven website. I see. Okay. Uh, it's interesting that the docs don't tell me about this. Um, 
it may just be their mentality that like they actually do want people to start with nothing. And and, and like I said earlier, I actually do think um, uh, this is a good way to get people to learn about what all of the folders mean, because we'll see in a second um, what 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 you can actually do here. Uh, start to create your first Nuxt module. Starter to create your first Nuxt layer. So yeah, we probably. I mean, we don't, we don't really even want the one for content because we're not building a static, completely static website. Oh well, uh, it it is what it is. It is what it is. They showed it earlier. In the introduction. Or do you mean on on the side base documentation? Um, I'm guessing we can uh, wait until I start on the uh, <laughs> ES Lint config, but I think I can get it set up in under ten minutes. Set up and working in under ten minutes. Yeah, Alt Tab is a is a great app. Yeah, welcome in Arpath. Glad to have you. Okay, so we have ourselves a next a Nuxt app. Uh, let me reload this win window because I just installed dependencies. Um, we shouldn't get any errors because now it has like all the dependencies it needs. Um, but if we look at like app.view, give it a second to spin up. Fail to load custom to extend from. Please see ESLint output. What? Oh no! Wait, 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 wait. Why is it loading an ESLint config from the folder above it? Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. It is Mido, and I'm and I'm curious why. Okay. I think the I think once we generate its own ESLint config in the folder itself, it'll stop. We'll stop getting that error. But yeah, I think that's 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 just an issue of us using Turbo Repo. Um, yeah, you're you're totally right. So yeah, we'll 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 generate the ESLint. But um, in terms of the CLI generation, I'm honestly I'm gonna I, they could they could do better. And I think they're I think they're working on it because like it, the the Nuxt two experience, if I remember correctly, asked you a bunch of questions like, do you want an ESLint config? Are you using TypeScript? That kind of thing, thing. But project generation, uh, I'll give it a six out of ten just because it's lacking. Like it's just like it's it doesn't give you much. But again, there there are reasons you may or may not like that. Okay, let's keep moving. Um, we can, this tells us about defining like Nux config and stuff like that. At this point, we're going to hop out of the the Nux docs and just set up uh, ESLint config. Um, I will show though, if you look at the guide, this actually shows you what folder structure you can expect in a Nuxt app. So right here along the key concepts, uh, a, a fully fledged, fleshed out, fledged out, a fully f fully fledged, full fledged, a. a a Nuxt app that has a lot of stuff in it will have folders that look like this. And each of these folders is for a specific thing. So you have the components directory, you have layouts, which can have like your base layout, you have like middlewares, you have pages, which is where your actual like routes will go, um, all that good stuff. Um, and the guide here tells you how to, how to set all of that up. Um, honestly, Let's do that first. Let's get a basic layout file and an index page loading in the way that, that they would expect. Um, do they tell us how to do that in here? Um, let's see. Views. Nux provides several component layers to implement the user interface of your application. Uh, by default, Nux will treat this file as the entry point. So this app.view that it generated, that is the entry point. Um, does Nux have the concept of loaders in the folders? Uh, what do you mean by that? Um, I know, so one of the cool things about Nux is like, it basically auto imports like everything. So you very rarely have to actually directly import a component or import a middleware or something like that. It just, um, it automatically imports stuff, which is, what actually is, is a lot of magic that you may not be used to. But yeah, and I think that's what we're going to do, Veritatas. But I want the guide to tell me how to do that, because we're also gauging the documentation here. Um, so yeah, like in this example, they create a component in the components folder, and then they can just use it in app.view. They actually don't have to import it. Um, OK, yeah, so th they don't call them loaders. 
Um, they you can look at data fetching, um, and I think like data loading, um, or where would this be under? It's not called loaders, but they do have a way of doing it. Basically, it's kind of like uh, like you have uh, handler functions that are like similar to functions you would have in your API folder, and then you can just use those inside of your component. We'll try to demonstrate that later, but the types flow through. So when you use fetch, you actually get type completion of what API routes are available. Um, okay, let's create a pages index.view and see what happens. So I'm going to create, I don't want to do that. I want to create a folder called pages folder called pages and inside of there I'm going to create an index.view. Uh, we'll get rid of this <laughs> we'll get rid of this error in a second. Um, view. I'm pretty sure I have let me just double check that I have the uh, volar extension which is like the the main view extension this one. Yeah, it is installed. I thought it gave me snippets. Does anybody know what snip, snippet I'm looking for? SFC, single file component. It doesn't matter. I can just create, I can literally just do, oh, maybe that's it. Template. Oh, well. Oh well, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it live. We'll do it from scratch. So you you have so if you're if you're new to view components, template is essentially your render function. This is where all of your um, your UI code goes. Uh, let's say we have a div, and then inside of there, we'll just have an H2 that says hello world. Okay. So this is our basic component. Think of this like a React render function. Um, now what I want to do is I want to make sure that app dot view loads this. Um, so instead of loading this next welcome. There should be a way to load. I think like I think I want like Nuxt layout, maybe. Um, let's do a layout. Yeah, this is what I want because a layout can have like a nav bar and a footer, and then it has a slot where the things go into. So let's do this. So we're gonna create a layouts folder. Layouts, layouts, and inside of there, we'll create one called default. Um, I, I don't know why this is happening, that it, it copies it all on one line. Okay, we don't have a header or a footer. For now, we will literally just have the slot. So if, uh, if you're, I want to keep relating this back to React because I know a lot of people are React developers, but slot is essentially like React children. Uh, this is where it's going to render the main content. Um, and so you could think of this as like a, it's a shell, a layout that renders the main content and you could have like a nav bar and stuff like that. Um, now, if we look in pages.index, that's good. How? I. Th it's like an outlet? Outlet? It might, Nesby. Let's actually try that really quick, just because <laughs> I don't have to do this all day. I mean, honestly, I should, I should be clicking this little copy button, but if I copy by hand um, and then paste and then format with volar, yeah. That does it. That's good to know. Okay. Uh, now, I do want to find in the docs Nux layout because I, I just knew this because I've done this before. But if I didn't do this, um, I'm curious what would actually happen. Why is my cap lock, caps lock on? This is app.view. Let's see what happens. So I have this app.view. I also have this pages and this layout. But right now, I do believe because I don't have Nux layout in the app.view, um, it will not load automatically. So let's run it. Good to know, Ma. I think we'll, we'll, uh, we'll test that out later uh, when we're like working on features. Yeah, so right now, it doesn't know to use my layout, and that's because I need that special Nux layout component. Um, find more information in the layouts section. Yeah, so um, I created that default layout, and then in app.view, I need to pass in, uh, or I need to use Nux layout, which is an auto-imported um, component. You see that I don't have to import anything. I just get access to it. But I do get type completion for it. So like it knows what it is. It knows that I have it available. You can see as I start typing, there's actually a lot of stuff just available to me. Um, I do think that is one of the interesting things about Nux. I think 
I think if you're coming from the React world, you might not like this because it's a bunch of magic. It's a bunch of things that just exist that you don't have to import. But now that I'm using the layout there, this should load the default layout, which loads the slot. And then it should load the index page. It doesn't look like it's doing that. Oh, I need to do Nuxt page. Oof. Okay. Um, so we want the layout. I mean, not woof. It's just, it's, it's, it's a lot to take in that it didn't do for me that I need to read the docs to know how to do. So load the page inside of the Nuxt layout. There we go. Now it says hello world. So um, we've, we've figured out the whole layout system. Um, we basically have our main entry point here, which has these, these big components. Uh, we then have our index page, which is just little hello world. And then we have a layout, which we'll go in later and add like a nav bar and stuff like that. Uh, that's good to know, Veritatas. Like, if I just delete this, then it'll automatically just load the default layout. Do I want to do that? I'll keep it for now, but it is good to know. Honestly, let's just rename this to, like, app old.view. So if I just, if it doesn't know that it exists anymore, now it automatically just loads the default layout with the index route. So that is good to know. I think you would have this if you need some, like, top-level data loading or something like that. So, yeah. Yeah, I didn't talk about what we're doing, but basically we are creating an app where users can manage lists of items. <laughs> so it's very, very generic. Uh, we, in, in this instance, we really don't really care about the data or, or anything like that. We more so care about our, our developer experience in working with this framework. Um, it's, so it's a super basic app. Yeah, I think and that's what I was thinking, uh, Amito, is like basically we might want to have some overarching code in here that runs on every page load. So that's why we would keep app.view, but we'll, we'll see. We probably could get rid of it eventually. All right, so honestly, I'm going to give this a 5 out of 10 because it's a lot of manual work, <laughs> a lot of manual work to get things going. I think, I think at the same time... Um, uh, it forces people to learn about Nux, and I, and I think that that is a good thing because if you're coming from some other framework or, or, or whatever else, you might have the uh, uh, you might be motivated to try and treat it like something else instead of trying to learn how this thing works, like because it has a pages folder, so you might treat it like the Nux routes folder, but it's a little bit different. Yeah. Um, so. Okay. Let's set up ESLint. So at this point, we have a basic app. Honestly, the CLI didn't give us much, but we read the docs and we learned how layouts worked. Works, worked. Um, <clears throat> now. Is there anything in these docs about ESLint? I, I'm just, I'm so, like, don't, 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 set, don't do a, uh, a prediction yet. Let me get set up, and then we'll do a prediction on how, how long it's going to take me to set up ESLint. But I just want to do some reconnaissance first. Yeah. <laughs> ESLint time. Uh, ESLint Nux config. Um, ESLint config to be used for Nuxt. But will it work with Nuxt 3? I think this is the tricky part. Um, let's look at their issues. Update to yarn three. Next three, plug in view three recommended instead of, okay, so that got closed. Uh, I think that means it supports Nux3. I want YesLint plugin view. The, the, so the, the, the one reason I would want this package is because of all of these global variables, right? So honestly, I think we'll just, we'll set up YesLint using the YesLint CLI. But what we'll see is after we do that, ESLint is going to be like, I don't know what Nux layout is, or I don't know what Nux page is. Um, oh, thank you, Mod. Is there, so there's apparently there's another one. There's ESLint config TypeScript. Mm. 
I don't know what, what uh, uh, repo that corresponds to. That package is part of the same repo? It's from AntFu. AntFu does a lot of cool things in the uh, open source world. Yeah, it's from ESLint config. So we'll just follow the, um, we'll follow this guide here. Um, first of all, uh, okay. I'm gonna, I'll run the prediction. I'm gonna run, run a prediction here. Um, Will CJ have a working ESLint plus Airbnb? That's the other tricky part here. Config in uh, 10... Oh, and... Uh, working ESLint plus Airbnb config in under 10. Under 10 minutes. We all know what this means. Um, yes? No. Easiest <laughs> prediction of my life? Look. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna sway things a little bit here. I've done this before in that in that sample project I said I, I've worked on for like an hour I do believe I got it working there now. I'm not gonna copy any code I still have to figure it out again, but I have done it before so let that inform your prediction uh, And if you want to predict you can use your channel points uh, channel points are just what you get for like watching the show following if you're a sub you get a multiplier but using those points you can basically gamble them to decide if i'm going to be able to do this uh and you only have like 10 seconds left to do it uh recreate nux3 preset i'm trying to use things that are from the core library itself so i definitely want to use this one because it's on the nux repo i mean if I can't get this working, I'm open to figuring out or finding another ESLint config, but I do want to try to focus on things from the core library first. Uh, all right, so everyone, everyone has, everyone's voted. Let's set a timer and go. Um, now, is it self-sabotage if, um, if I use the ESLint CLI to generate the base config and then go from there? I guess we won't do that, but um, we want 10 minutes on the clock starting now. Okay, uh, I'm just going to follow these docs here. So I'm going to install uh, Nuxt ESLint config and ESLint as dev dependencies. So here we go. Uh, we're in the Nuxt folder. We get those two. <laughs> yeah, more configs. Um, and then we create an ESLint rc.cjs. So new file, eslint rc.cjs, put that in there. It extends the eslint config. Um, we can create a linter script in our package.json. Um, and how do we do TypeScript? So we actually want to extend eslint config TypeScript instead. Great. All right, I'm going to reload the window. Failed to load Nux.js ESLint config TypeScript. I, I, do I need that as a separate dev dependency? I thought it was just included. Let's, I mean, I guess we'll try, we'll try installing this as a dev dependency. Read the whole section? Listen. Listen. <laughs> Would you read the whole section if you were me? So I'm going to uninstall the base one and only have the, the TypeScript one. Actually, I don't... <laughs> I'm going to reinstall the TypeScript one just in case it needed that one as a, as a, as a dependency. <laughs> okay, so we got that. Let's reload the window. Uh, see what happens. We don't want to see an ESLint error. But we do see an error here. There we go. Uh, replace with single quotes. That's nice. So ESLint is working. I mean, we can double check. Let's go into like our app.view. Um, we'll add a script right here. Um, we'll give it a type of setup. And uh, we're just going to log hello world. 
cool. Does it complain about? Yeah, it compl right now it complains about semicolons because it says it doesn't want semicolons. I actually prefer semicolons, which is the next step in this setup is I need to add the rules that I prefer. Uh, but we know that, that ESLint is working. Now, at this point, um, uh, we're going to look at view ESLint Airbnb TypeScript because the core view um, uh, repo or uh, organization has a bunch of examples of uh, using ESLint Airbnb, conf Airbnb config with view, right? So this whole repo shows how to do it, and then they have an examples folder um, for how they did it. Now, I probably want create view TypeScript. Let's see what they let's see what they have in their in their ESLint config here. ESLint config Airbnb with TypeScript. ESLint config Airbnb with TypeScript. Let's just install that. I think that's what I want. So I'm going to install this as a dev dependency. View ESLint config Airbnb with TypeScript. Airbnb is a housing company, but they have a website that uses JavaScript. They have a bunch of JavaScript engineers, and uh, they came up with the um, Airbnb config because it's like how they like to write their JavaScript code. And I and I agree with how they like to write their JavaScript code. So if I extend Nuxt and then I extend ESLint config Airbnb TypeScript, um, it wants trailing commas. Look at this. So if I do this, it, we have our trailing commas. And if we go back over to our app.view, it needs a semicolon. If I run the linter, it just works. Why is it complaining about this? The lang attribute of script is missing. Cool, because I want language to be TypeScript. Are we done already? <laughs> was that it? I honestly think that was it. Let's, But I mean, let's double check because um, like it's not complaining about Nux layout there. Okay, so here, here's gonna be the real test. There are JavaScript va variables that are globally available in Nuxt, um, like define page attributes or something like that. Um, and uh, if we if ESLint complains about those, then we know that there's an issue. Um, I guess we're not done yet because I do want prettier, but that actually uh, could, could should be pretty uh, pretty easy. Um, Let's look at middleware, because I know I just remember there's a way to say like, yeah, define page meta. And this is just a global variable, but but it's available. Um, uh, like this. Yeah, and it doesn't care, and if I hover over it, we still get uh, TypeScript type completion. So middleware, and then you can specify the middleware as you want to run. Cool. So. Yeah, it's 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 it is working, but we want to get prettier working too. So we have four minutes to get uh, ESLint prettier, which should be easy because usually um, uh, ban. No, we won't ban the doubters. We'll just uh, convert them into <laughs> into non doubters. Um, okay, so we want ourselves a prettier um, RC .cjs. Throw that in there. So we want. A tab width of two. We do want semi semicolons and trailing comma is ES5. Um, and then if we go into integrating with linters, we want ESLint config prettier and ESLint plugin prettier. Um, so we will install ESLint config prettier as a dev dependency. Um, and then we add prettier to the extends section. But then ESLint plugin plug prettier. Um, we do plugin prettier recommended. I think we want this one too. Basically, these work together to l turn the prettier linter rules into ESLint config rules. Um, so what we want is, wait, did I do that right? This one. And so now in our extends uh, in the ESLint config, 
We have one more that we're going to extend, which is going to be uh, this one. All right, let's re reload the window and try it out. Uh, dash dash save isn't needed anymore. Um, oh, did I not save? I didn't save the file. Uh, but um, it used to be that if you didn't pass in dash dash save, it wouldn't add it to your package.json, but npm fixed that. Okay, so we have prettier. Um, how can we test it? Um, let's wait for all everything to load. Define page meta uh, middleware an array. Run the linter. I guess uh, it's more so an if I run make a long function. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's working. <laughs> Does anybody have like a really long function that I, I we can ask Chat GPT uh, to give us a. a <clears throat> create a JavaScript function with uh, 100 parameters. <laughs> Come on, ChatGPT, you can do it. You have a minute. <laughs> param 3, Param 4, Param 5, Param 6. Uh, here it goes, one at a time. I mean, that's honestly, that's all we need. Um, cause we can do param 31, um, all right. So if we format this with prettier, I mean, even if we, honestly, if we, so even if we don't have to do format, if we run ES lint prettier kicks in and does that. Cool. We did it. We did it in under 10 minutes. Look at all, look at all you doubters out there. We got prettier. We got ESLint config. We got Airbnb. That feels good. <laughs> it feels good to get a, to get a win. Because uh, uh, my seedlings, I mean, that's what you get. That's what you get for being a doubter. Um, working in under 10 minutes, yes. 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 But honestly, like, this is a breath of fresh air compared to what we tried to do with... Um, uh, Svelte kit. And, and I mean, I, I already talked about it last, like when we did Svelte kit, like me trying to do this Airbnb config in an ecosystem where they probably don't use it like they do in, in other ecosystems. But this gets a, this gets a 10 out of 10. It was, it was super easy to set up. Um, and I mean, a lot of it has to do, <laughs> good job chat. Can we get some claps for chat GPT? <laughs> um, but a lot of it, I mean, the reason it was so easy is because the core view repo has an entire package with examples on how to get things set up with ESLint and Airbnb config and everything else. Yeah, well played, well played, thank you, thank you. Um, cool. So we're ready to go, we're ready to go. Um, I think the the one thing that I think was tricky when I was setting this up, I mean, on it, like the last time I set this up, um, which was like sometime last week, um, the main issue I had was I was getting these variables were undefined everywhere. ESLint didn't know what they were. Um, but I think simply extending from their config there, um, uh, uh, basically adds the global variables so that it knows that these actually should exist. It's important to know that having a function with such a large number of parameters is generally not good practice. <laughs> Uh, let's say this, uh, refactor the code above to use an options object. Do I not like the format on save prettier functionality? I like to do it myself because sometimes it's, it's, it's very, uh, jarring when I click save and then all of the code just completely moves. So usually I'll write out everything that I want. And then I'll manually run ESLint fix all, all auto fixable problems. But because I have the prettier plugin, ESLint fix all auto fixable problems also fixes um, the uh, prettier issues as a part of ESLint. So I don't have to do prettier on save. Yeah. I don't know, Fob. I mean, you could try it. Honestly, you could try it. Um, Oh wow, 
Here's an example of how the function with 100 parameters can be refactored to use an options object. Uh, refactor the above code to use destructuring. <laughs> yeah, you can try it, Fob. I don't know if it's tied to your account though. If if like your the the account uh, you have it has a different country on it, then it might not work. Does Prettier and Beautify do the same thing? Uh, for the most part, but Prettier has a, a config. Um, I don't know if Beautify has a config. I, I used Beautify a long time ago. These days, I'm mainly just using Prettier. What if I don't tell it how to do the refactor? It could probably figure it out. <laughs> Am I doing a chat interview with the chat? Yeah, that's funny. Okay. Um, Let's keep moving. So we generated our project. We've got linting and formatting. Let's get Tailwind uh, set up. So um, is this here? So a part of Nuxt, they have what they call modules. Here it is. It's at the top. And these are community packages that can automatically integrate with Nuxt. So you can see there's a lot of stuff in here. The first one on the list is Tailwind. This is, this is what we want. It's Nuxt Tailwind. Um, so if we look at their documentation, they'll tell us how to get set up. Yarn add or npm install nuxjs tailwind css. We'll install that. And then in our nuxt config, we need to add this as a module. Uh, I don't know of any good resources for tailwind. I mean, ultimately, yeah, ultimately the documentation, and then also you can use uh, the uh, VS Code plugin. So in my Nux config here, I want a module section that has that. Cool. Now what? When running Nux dev, this module will look for these files. If you're going to create your own Tailwind CSS file, make sure to add the at Tailwind directives for each of the Tailwind layers. What if I don't? You can customize the module's behavior by by using Tailwind CSS property in Nuxt config. Have I tried prettier plugin Tailwind CSS? No, but that could be cool. Are, that, that that formats the class names. That's pretty cool. Um. Any comment on how all the doc sites are the same and wonderful? Uh, do you mean for like the Nuxt ecosystem? Is that what you mean? Um. Config. I do think we need, yeah, we need a, I do believe we need a Tailwind config because we're going to be adding Daisy UI. So we need a config that we can add it to. Um, let's create a TypeScript one. Yeah, look at that. Um, Tailwind.config.ts. I don't know why all of the, <laughs> the copy of the um, um, the docs is like doing this, um, and I don't I don't do I need to, I don't think I need to specify or override the theme at all. I just need a base config so that we can go in and add um, uh, Daisy UI later. Okay, so Tailwind is installed. I think we have it configured. Let's run the app and try to use some some Tailwind classes. <laughs> yeah, I, I love till. <laughs> um, this is cool. We haven't seen this yet, but that's actually like a loading screen for um, uh, for Nuxt that happens as things are, are bundling and building up. Um, does Tailwind automatically do a sans serif font? I didn't know that was a thing. That's cool. I, I guess it does. Yeah, Tailwind CSS gives us base styles. Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, and welcome in Chief Mustard. <laughs> That's a default. Pretty cool. Cool. I did not know that. Um, so let's try to use some of those styles over here on our Hello World. Um, we can give this a class of text center. Let's install um, the Tailwind extension because I do not have that because I love Tailwind so much. I don't have the extension. Oh, no, it is installed. Uh, 
Uh, Tailwind is just different from Bootstrap. Bootstrap gives you pre-built components. Tailwind just gives you utility classes. Now, what we're about to use is this thing called Daisy UI. And it is more comparable to Bootstrap in that it gives you pre-built components. So for example, if I want a button, um, I can use the class BTN and it gives me buttons that look like this. Under the hood, it's using a collection of Tailwind classes. Okay. Um, what was I doing? Oh yeah, why is this extension working? Um, Windy CSS is cool, yeah. If we want to talk about Tailwind really quick, um, Uno CSS by Antfu, the same person that actually created that, was it the the ESLint config that we were looking at? Um, they have a lot of really cool projects, but Uno CSS uh, is like a more generic version that can use, you can pick and choose, like instead of using, you can choose if you want to use a Windy style or Tailwind style. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, what, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I just want my, I want my editor to give me Tailwind autocomplete. I wonder why that's not happening. The Tailwind extension needs to warm up, so it starts working after you manually type the first class. Good to know. <laughs> I would have never known that, Panther Fen. Thank you for that. Okay, so we do text center. Now it's in the center, um, and then is there, how do you do like header? Heading? It needs a cup of coffee. Yeah, that's so weird, okay. Um, text large? Isn't there like a, a built-in class for like a, a header one? Um, Control space would do it? Okay. <laughs> the tailwind extension is scuffed. Um, I, want, I just want an H1. What's up, DJ Concarne? Welcome in. Uh, font sizes. Typography. That's a separate dependency, though. I guess we just want 2XL. It's so small. <laughs> Why is it so small? Um, is that as big as it gets? We're going to do 9XL. Yeah, thank you to callers. Yeah, that's what I want to see. That's a good hello world. Okay. Tailwind is working. That's awesome. Uh, 10 out of 10. That was easy. <laughs> okay. Uh, now component library setup. Now, there are a lot of component libraries that we could use. Um, specifically in the Vue ecosystem, Vuetify, Quasar, Prime Vue, these are some of the main Vue component libraries that people use. Um, we're going to try out Daisy UI. I've never used Daisy UI, but it is built on top of Tailwind. I guess bef before we dive into ta to Daisy UI, does anybody in the chat have an opinion on this? Like, is there a better Tailwind-based UI library that works really well with Nuxt or Vue? Um, any, any thoughts in chat? Now, uh, the, the thing that um, Consta UI... I, I'll just show it for people that haven't seen it before because it's really cool. Um, so Consta UI is a CSS library that gives you like mobile styles. You have an iOS style and like a material style. This is this would be really cool for like hybrid mobile apps. We're not going to use it though. <laughs> uh, View Tailwind. Let's look at it. Oh yeah, actually I, I was sitting in bed searching on my phone this morning and I found this. Though it does look like it's like not styled very much. It's like this is like a base library that you would build your own components from more so. Um <laughs> naive UI. Yeah, so Flowbyte is one. We had issues getting it working with Svelte Kit. I honestly don't think we would have the same issues getting it working with Nuxt, but I do want to try Daisy just because a lot of people have recommended it. 
um, headless UI. Yeah, and I want something that's not bare bones. Like, I do want something that is, like, fully styled. And so this is one of the cool things about Daisy UI. Look at this, everybody. Honestly, I'm just going to use Daisy. I forgot about this. They have a forest theme. Instantly, it's Coding Garden. And thank you, Code Then Cake. Th thank you uh, for the uh, 20 months. And thank you for all the follows, everyone. I appreciate that. But, yeah, they have code. They, they, it was built for us. They have Coding Garden theme. <laughs> So yeah, we'll, we'll use Daisy UI. The one thing I was hesitant of is typically a lot of UI frameworks uh, or component libraries need some JavaScript in order to get uh, interactivity. Like typically like drop downs or modals or even like side navs, um, typically they need JavaScript to work, which means if we're using it with Vue, we would need some sort of adapter to get that JavaScript to work with Vue components. However, I don't think there's any JavaScript here and I think all of their components work without JavaScript. Like you can have modals. I think they're just using uh, native browser features. Like this is a, uh, what's this thing called? What's this thing called? The, um, uh, anybody know what I'm talking about? It's like built into browsers now. Not alert. Dialogue, yeah. So dialogue is a, is a new thing built into the, uh, to the web, to web browsers that give you um, modal-like functionality without any JavaScript. It, it looks like this, like, um, I guess it got to reload. It looks like this, but you can style it to look like, um, like it's hovering on the UI. Um, but yeah, I see what T Terawatt is saying. Daisy is bad. It doesn't have good accessibility and it's ugly. I mean, it's got a, it's got a green theme. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to try it out. Like we, we tried Flowbit last time or Flo Flowbite. I think it's worth trying at least. Uh, and again, like this isn't any, this app that we're building here is not gonna be something that lasts a long time. We're gonna be done with it after today. So I think it's okay. Um, the other thing that you typically need JavaScript for are like uh, drop down menus and um, uh, yeah, this uses like the native. So like the UI itself is styled this way and then it has native select. And then there also is, um, um, is it called drop down? Maybe it's called like menu. Yeah, these are like menu items. And then they do have drop down too. <laughs> Native selects. Yeah, so I mean, technically you could use this. But I, what's crazy to me is like these typically, uh, these typically need JavaScript, but uh, CSS has gotten so good that you can do these things without JavaScript. I will be honest though, this UI is really hard to see on this dotted background. Like you can't, there's not a good, there's not a good contrast between the menu, um, the menu and the background. I think that's, that's that just, just that theme specifically. Do I have dark reader? No, I don't. Off. Yeah, it's not on. I, I think I have, it's only specific website. So it, it was off. Black. That's cool. The thing is, we could we could choose the theme and then add the coding garden green as like the main color. <laughs> it's funny that a CSS library is poor UI design, but all of that to say, uh, you could use this with literally any front end framework. So Vue, React, Svelte, uh, Angular, anything, because it doesn't have any JavaScript. Everything is just CSS based, and if you do want custom functionality, you would just write that yourself. Um, the other cool thing was like the, uh, uh, was it called the side nav? The drawer. Um, like typically you need JavaScript to do this kind of thing, but if you look at what it's doing, it, it has like a, a checkbox, I believe. Yeah, it has a checkbox that when the checkbox is checked, we use CSS to say that the drawer is open. So uh, no JavaScript uh, needed. I've never, no, I haven't used it before. Um, I, I don't, I can't comment on production readiness, um, but for today, it's going to be fine. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, if we can get it set up. Uh, let's go though. So th this is our, our next thing is we're going to get a component library and a basic layout set up. Yeah. Okay. So install Daisy UI and then add it in the plugins section of our Tailwind config. So um, here we go. Do shouldn't this be a dev dependency? Guess not. 
And then we want to add Daisy UI as a plugin in our Tailwind config. So over here, we'll say plugins. And then uh, require Daisy UI. Yeah, it, it's, it's a good thing to mention Yuke or Yukek. I'll call you Yuke. <laughs> um, because, yeah, like you could build sites that look good just with CSS that don't require JavaScript for any kind of UI components, which is a which is a good thing because there are a lot of people, not a lot, there's a there's a subset of people that browse the web without JavaScript enabled. And if you build a site with this, you could get it working without ha having JavaScript on the page. So, uh, yeah, can we import it? Uh, import Daisy UI from Daisy UI. Uh, and then, why is this complaining? Yeah, because then it doesn't have types. I think we we go this route and then we just ESLint ignore it. Um, it's okay to ignore it to 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 do it for that line. Okay, now that we have it, um, let's add a button. <laughs> we always add buttons, but um, let's say I want that nice primary button there. I create a button with the class BTN button primary. I mean, if you're used to bootstrap, this will look very similar, but it's actually using Tailwind classes under the hood. So in our in our index page here, um, we'll add a button. And then why is this complaining? Visiting an explicit type attribute for the button. Cool, so these are like accessibility things. Um, it is a button. Start it back up. Yeah, and that's what I meant, Codex. That's why I rephrase because it's like some people. <laughs> it works. Nice. Oh, I forgot. So we need to set up the theme. Um, so let's look at their docs on how to get a theme going. Um, Daisy UI comes with a number of themes. Use add data theme to your HTML tag. Okay. So if I do data theme. Okay, this is going to be interesting. Um, because I don't have an HTML tag. <laughs> Um, but if I do it on the Nuxt layout, maybe, uh, like this, should work. Can you do it in the Nuxt config? That would make sense. Like, uh, um, So the Nuxt config gives you the ability to like insert uh, meta tags and stuff like that, I do believe. So there should be a section on um, an HTML tag, uh, HTML attribute. Why would anyone care about... Styles that are using JS. I guess that's true. I don't know. I wanted to acknowledge the comment that was made for a second. We don't have to argue about it. Um, uh, let's go back to the docs. So app HTML HTML attributes. Is that the config path? I can't. I don't even know what you're saying. Uh, people. Oh, people. PPO. I see. Um, app. HTML, HTML attributes. Um, and then what was what was the attribute that we want? Uh, data dash theme forest. Is it head HTML? Okay, uh, let's see if we can find it in the Nuxt documentation. Um, Nuxt config. Read more in the docs on Nuxt config. Head. Meta. Name content. Ask chat GPT? So uh, ultimately, I just I did just want to show you this to to show you what uh, TG Mr. P is talking about. Basically, um, if you want to have if you want to set meta tags or add custom like scripts from a CDN or links or anything like that, you can do it in this file and it gets loaded on every single page. Um, app head um, 
HTML attributes. I'm not getting type completion though. It does not like it. Config Daisy UI theme. Yeah, that's the other way to do it. So instead of putting it in the head, um, there should be a way to do it in the theme. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, technically it works for just a section of the page, so it doesn't have to be on the HTML. I think it should work as we intended and just put it on put it on there. So I think in theme, I, I do need to put this in the config. So uh, Daisy UI themes forest. And then uh, this should work in our layout, really just at the top level here. Um, I don't know if, the, if these attributes get passed through. Um, data theme were, were passed to the component but not automatically inherited. Thank you, Vue and Nux for letting me know that that is the case. Um, so we already have this div here. We can put it on that. Um, first of all, let's get rid of all this fun. Um, let's make sure it's loading here. Data theme forest. All right. We just haven't configured it right. Maybe we didn't spell forest right. We put two R's instead of one. Yeah, did anybody catch that? <laughs> um, tailwind one. Hey, look at that. Nice, nice. Yeah, apparently, there, I, I mean, maybe, maybe there is a way to get it in the HTML attributes, but uh, for now, I think it's totally fine to do it in the layout because um, that is, uh, this was loaded for every single page. I guess the one issue is if you have multiple layouts, then you would me need to make sure that it gets passed into every single one. But yeah, cool. That's great. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, let's work on the layout. I mean, again, like, so again, this is not a score of Nuxt because we're at this point, we're outside of the Nuxt ecosystem. At this point, we're just in Tailwind and Daisy UI land. But I, I give this a 10 out of 10 too. I am, uh, I am very happy with how easy that was to get set up. We got the theming going. It's awesome. I guess we could go into the theme generator too. Like we could use uh, like black as a base. Oh, and then it, and then it has primary of green. Let's use the black theme. And then, did we do button primary? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Maybe? Is it any different? It looks the same to me. <laughs> Let me just restart here. Yeah, there we go. Though, uh, apparently, the black theme doesn't have rounded corners on the buttons. I'm OK with that. Um, let's just do this in the config. Yeah, we had it. We had a dark. So we changed that there. And then, um, can I do like that? What is happening? 
An object literal cannot have multiple properties with the same name. What are you talking about? Right? That was weird. That was really weird. Okay. I don't, I don't even know what it was complaining about. Because that fixed it. Uh, regardless. How long did ESLint actually take? Nine minutes and 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think changing the Tailwind config, you have to, you have to restart the dev server. I mean, honestly, this is just the forest theme again. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. It's fine. Uh, and thank you for that resub, Umheck. Appreciate that. Um, Veeb. Try linting inside of a Svelte component. That was the issue we ran into because we. this is what we did. We installed Airbnb config base. Uh, well, you also need you also need the TypeScript one, so Airbnb config base TypeScript or whatever. But then try linting inside of a Svelte component, and uh, we couldn't get that working. We got linting inside of TypeScript files, but not um, uh, Svelte components. Background color to black. Base one hundred. Okay, I believe you, Veeb, and I think um, I'll probably give Svelte a second chance sometime next week. Um, that's cool. All right, let's let's make a layout. Um, I just want a nav bar and then like a main container area. So we want a nav bar. Yeah, like this. So in our layout file, we'll put the nav bar above the page slot. The nav bar is going to be the same color as the background. Yeah. Uh, if I just if I remove the background color, what what's the default background color? It is it is that by default. Um, well, we had a lot of the the issue there was uh, Flowbyte didn't work well with Svelte Kit. It works with Svelte, but Svelte Kit it has issues because of the server render process. Like the the styles aren't getting injected. Um, BG neutral should be fine. Yeah, that's a that's slightly different. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, we have we have a we have a nav bar. Um, cool. Uh, now I want a container. I think this this is just built into um, uh, this is just built into uh, Tailwind. That's what, that's what I wanted to say because I could do class um, container. Uh, MX auto. So that'll like center it and then give it a like this. So like on larger screens. Um, is that working? That is not working. Yeah, we still have Tailwind. I guess it is. So on really big screens, you get that much margin and then a little bit. And then on smaller screens, there's not much margin at all. I like that. All right. On the index, uh, get rid of that. In the Tailwind config, you can do theme, container, center, true. Oh, is that part of Daisy or is that part of Tailwind? Um, it's 
probably till in. If it's on the container, um, yeah. Container center true centering by default. Cool. I'm okay with doing uh, MX auto to add the centering because that just does margin auto on the left and right. But that that is good to know. Give it some padding. Sure. Sure. Uh, so if we go to our layout, um, padding two. I can't even tell now. <laughs> like that. Did that work? I don't even know if it worked. I guess having the uh, the button let us know if it worked. I feel like that doesn't have any padding. Does Naive UI work with Nux3? I'm not familiar with uh, Naive UI. Um, what am I doing? Oh yeah, I was seeing if the, if the padding works in the, uh, in the layout. Should have max WMD and MX auto. Oh, max width, medium, margin auto. Yeah. Maybe. And that's a little too small. I, I like I like what you're thinking, though. Max width, large? Extra large? I feel like it's not loading. <laughs> Max with 32 rim. Oh, it is working. Two extra large. 42 rim. Yeah, that's my style. Look at that. Nice. That's a good one. Okay, cool. Uh, and then I guess we don't really need padding at that point. And am I zoomed right now? No, I'm at 100%. Cool. Um, oh, yeah, I guess I did have the naive thing. Of it. 1999 stuff. Uh, container isn't needed. Oh, okay. Um, I guess that makes sense because I'm just setting max width and then margin auto. You think I should have some padding? All right, this is the last style suggestion I'll take because we shouldn't we shouldn't be worried about this. Um, theme black. Um, padding left. Oh, p that, that that does one rim. I want even more. Give me, give me two rim. Yeah. Cool. Why do I have my dev tools on the side? Um, I think I think it's just because I like to see the page. Actually, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I like it there. I guess. Um, I don't have a good reason for you. I guess I'll leave the Tailwind docs open. Okay, layout fine. Honestly, uh, I'm not even gonna rate this because this has this is this is this is just Tailwind. All right, now comes. The moment of truth, can we get login with Google working? Um, last time, this is where we ran into uh, a lot of issues, uh, mainly because uh, the auth module for SvelteKit uh, is still experimental. It's not, uh, it's not fully tested, fully production ready yet. Um, so here we go. It is social auth time. Now, now comes the time where any Nuxt three experts in the chat can uh, chime in as to what I should use. So if I go to the modules here, 
And actually, let's let's just talk about the ecosystem really quick. Because if I go to the modules, you can see there's this module called Nuxt Auth. This is not from the core library. This is not like official. It's from uh, an organization called Sidebase. And this is actually built on top of Next.js Auth. So very similar to how Auth.js core for SvelteKit is built on top of Next.js Auth. This is too. But again, it's not from the core team. Uh, Next Auth doesn't support Nux, or sorry, uh, Nuxt Auth doesn't support um, Nux three yet. Uh, how how do I find this? So if I just search for Nuxt Auth um, Auth .nuxjs org. So um, this is a full featured auth library, but it doesn't work for version three yet. I think if we look at the um, the the roadmap, you can see that right now um, is auth on here. Yeah, um, Nux three support is planned. Right now, it doesn't support it yet. So that's one issue. Is um, uh, this supports Nux 2, not directly Nux 3 just yet. Now, Nux auth-next, I do believe it, this is the one that they're working on, um, but it is, uh, V5 is experimental, but does this support Nux 3? Um... Compatibility with Nux three. Yeah. Um, three weeks ago, they were saying this module isn't a priority. So, uh, yeah. And I mean, it's not exactly Vue, right, Terawatt? It's, it, I guess I guess it, more so it is because when Vue 3 came out, it took a while for the ecosystem to update their packages to, to support Vue 3. Nuxt 3, similar idea. Like they, It took a while for Nuxt 3 to even come out because they had to like rewrite Nuxt. I don't know if they did a full rewrite. Maybe they did. But they, they did a whole lot of work to get it to support Vue 3 features, and now all of the ecosystem and community packages haven't necessarily been updated yet. So... Basically, what I'm seeing is that if I want to do auth with Nux3 in a full featured package, the one from Sidebase is probably the one that I should use. Um, there's a Discord message. Um, Nuxt alt. An alternative for Nux3 only with no backwards compatibility. This will only work with Pina, had it originally working with Vuex. Let's look at this one on NPM. Um, Sidebase, next off. Eight hundred and twenty-nine weekly downloads. Um, the thing that I do like about this is that it's built on top of Next.js auth, which means that our database schema should be able to stay the same. Honestly, let's just let's just strap in and try it. Like we'll give this one a try. If it doesn't work. We can try Nux off next, but we'll give this one a try first because it does seem like this is the more supported one. Um, even though it's community maintained, um, it seems like they're putting a lot of effort into it. Um, so we're gonna try it. Does anybody have any beef with that? Or does it sound good? Yeah, I mean, and that's the that's the thing. Need more wood is like I don't really want to go from templates. I guess I could see what you did as an as an example or what libraries you chose, but I am going to be implementing everything myself. Um, did you use? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I I agree with that, Mito. But you have to take into account the fact that Nux three only came out. Uh, a month ago. So in, in a month's time, the fact that it has 800 uh, weekly down, downloads compared to, uh, I think it was like 600 for the other one. 
uh, we're, we're in, um, we're in new package territory. Auth next. This is the one. No, no, no. Never mind. That's, wait. Is it? Version 5? I mean, this one has 58,000 weekly downloads. Okay. Uh, never mind. Like, should we try to use this one? I thought this one didn't support Nux 3. Honestly, like, that's, that's what scared me away from this, right? Because if you look at that issue that I found, compatibility with Nux 3. Um, please do not ask every two weeks. <laughs> the issue can be closed. Um... Consider this module is not priority. Um, that's a big old conversation about, does this support version three? <laughs> uh, what's up, Balanero? Welcome in. Um, Superbase works great with Nux3. That's something I considered is like, what if we used a third-party auth provider? Sidebase auth is a work in progress as well. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know if I'm going to do a Christmas stream. I thought of doing... So if you if you saw, I did a Thanksgiving stream where I, I cooked Thanksgiving dinner. It was like a five-hour stream. It took me so long to cook everything. But what I was thinking is what if I try to speed run Christmas dinner? So like I try to cook all of Christmas dinner in like under an hour. That could be a fun stream. But I haven't confirmed that yet because it actually was a lot of work last time to get all the cameras set up and everything else. Twitch is greater than family. <laughs> What to do, what to do. And like, I guess this, this is the dilemma of working in something that is fairly newly released, right? So like this is, um, uh, Nux 3 came out uh, a little over a month ago, a month and a half ago. So ecosystem hasn't caught up yet. Um, there are quite, I mean, there's some issues open here. I, just, I can't decide. I guess we'll put it to a vote, but I may veto the vote depending on what you choose. Let's put it to a vote. How was the turkey? Uh, it was it was fine. Honestly, it didn't really have enough seasoning. Um, next year, I'm going to inject it with butter and like seasoned butter with like a, a, a turkey injector. Um, yeah. Okay. Do we use uh, side base or do we use uh, auth next? So side base, third party library, auth next. Technically a core library. It is under the uh, Nux.js organization. Um, but it is version 5. Uh, I don't know. I can't decide. You tell me. You have a minute to vote. Um, yeah. Yeah, I brined the turkey overnight. I guess my other hesitation is I don't even know if Auth Next will work with Nux 3. Because I didn't get a clear answer about that in their docs or in, like, the issue made it sound like they didn't support it. Yeah, I agree with that, Clicky Poo. But it did, it did seem like this is, like, a pretty well-used one. I guess we're going to go with this. But I could run into an issue with it just not working at all. So that's a thing. <clears throat> yeah, so they're doing the thing where they're not actually using semantic versioning. <laughs> did you actually? Did, that's actually really funny to see. Did you see that um, the version number? Five point oh point oh dash whatever. Um, Why wouldn't why wouldn't they just make it like 
beta, alpha, or release candidate? I don't know. It does show off next in the setup. Oh, but this this is Nuxt auth. So, okay, and here's here's so here's the other thing. And I guess I didn't mention this at the beginning. Nuxtjs.org is the documentation for Nuxt two. Nuxt.com is the documentation for Nuxt three. Um, and uh, auth is under nuxjs.com. So I, I mean, I also would have thought that like, okay, if it's supporting Nux3, it would be under nux.com. That's not confusing at all. <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna try it. I think what I'll fit, what I'll do is I'll commit so that I can roll back. Um, there's no Git folder there. Uh, make sure there's no Git folder in the Svelte example. Cool. Start from scratch. Do I have a git ignore? I do have a git ignore. Um, let's see. Uh, there's a lot of people here that know view if you view three if you want to throw your question in the chat. Uh, if it's a big question, feel free to throw it in the Discord. We have a, a help forum in there. Um, um, I don't think I want to commit my SQLite database. Is that what it's called? Dev.db, yeah. Okay, any Git experts in the chat? How, how do I remove something from a, that has been staged? Is it just Git RM? How do I unstage this file? Git RM dash dash stage. Didn't like that. Well, I don't want to. I mean, I guess it wouldn't. It honestly wouldn't hurt if the file was actually deleted. Um, use, oh yeah, you're totally right. Use the use the VS Code uh, GUI. That's gonna be the easiest way to do it. Delete the whole Git folder. I already did that once. Git restore staged. Um, what does that What does that do? I'll try the reset. Um, reset was the one. Okay. Checkpoint. Oh, not checkout. <laughs> I meant to type checkpoint. Oh, well. I really just want, um, I want a spot that I can roll back to if uh, this auth thing doesn't work out. Okay, here we go. Uh, Nux example. We're going to follow... Um, I'm going to follow the docs. Again, it's confusing because nux.com is nux3, nuxjs.org is nux2, auth is under nuxjs.org, but we're just going to assume that it's going to work. So here we go. Um, there are multiple nux3 modules under nux... Yeah, that's also confusing. Why? <laughs> Merry Christmas. Thank you so much for the gifts. Look at that. Look at all those those longtime community members getting gifted. I appreciate that code then cake. We got Jim, Yu-Gi-Off, Ricky, Mark Boots. Wow. Thank you. You're too kind. <laughs> Sorry my initial reaction was like, why'd you do that? What, what did I do? What, what did I do to deserve that? <laughs> yeah, that's how a lot of Coding Garden streams go in 131. It's like, yeah, we'll, 
assume it's going to work, but let's go. Okay, so we added that as a dependency. That's awesome. And then we also need this Nux.js Axios, apparently. Here we go. Um, here we go. So 1,203 packages is across multiple things. So it's a Svelte app, a Nuxt app, and a Next.js app. <laughs> it's the dependencies for all of those. Um, okay. Um, add, add it to the module section. Is this going to work? I don't... Oh, okay. We'll, we'll try Nux config modules. Um, okay, we added it to the module section. When adding the auth model to a Nux project, ensure you have activated the Vuex store. Oh no. Now it's taking us to Nux 2 documentation. So we need to cross-reference. We need to, um, uh, don't panic, don't panic. Go to nuxt.com and search for how to activate the store because this is Nuxt 3 documentation. Uh, store. Um, I'm panicking. <laughs> I wonder curly braces. So, I mean, that could actually be the interesting thing, right? So, um, I mean, I, I, just a quick aside. Uh, so let's talk about uh, next, or next auth because next auth has a package uh, called auth core. And they also created a uh, framework's Svelte kit as a wrapper around auth core. So basically you're getting the features of next auth inside of Svelte kit. We could create a similar wrapper for um, Nuxt. However, we already know that there's there's an issue. I don't even know if it's been published yet. Uh, there's an issue with Open ID connect connect providers, which we ran into last time. This is what people use. Let's see. They merged it, but I, what I was about to check is has it even been published to. Um, uh, NPM. Yeah, it hasn't. So they merged it, but it hasn't been it hasn't been published yet because the this last publish was six days ago. This has been deprecated. R one none. Um, this is the one that I saw that only has five hundred weekly downloads, which is. Like if you compare, so if you compare this one, which supports Nux three, with uh, the one from Sidebase, the one from Sidebase has more weekly downloads. Um, yeah, and so that's the one that we're we're trying to use right now is the uh, Auth Next. Um, however, their documentation. Um, <laughs> do, we, do we know what this is? <laughs> Nux Alt, an alternative module for Nux JS Auth. Wait, this is the one we just looked at. Yeah, this it's the same one. It's the same one that was on NPM. Um, I don't know if Nux3 has a concept of activating the Vuex store. Let's see. So if we go to the guide, is there a store folder? Vuex. There are a number of changes to what is recommended view best practice, as well as a number of breaking changes between view and three. It is recommend. Okay, no, no, not that. Vuex. Nux no longer provides a Vuex integration. Uh, instead, the official view recommendation is to <laughs> is to use Pina. So I don't think this is going to work if it depends on a Nux store. Uh, let's just assume. Let's just assume. Um.
So yeah, I think that's why we need to use Okay, so yeah, you're totally right. I think that's why we need we would would need to use this library instead. Um because it works with Pina. But instead of having a monkey patched nuxed off thing, I think I would rather use the side base one. <laughs> okay, so I think so uh this ends here. Like I, I know like if 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 Vuex isn't directly supported by Nux3, this Nux off module is not gonna work unless we use that other one. So uh, we gotta we gotta we gotta roll back. Um we don't we don't want this anymore. We're gonna we're gonna pick another library. Um and honestly I don't think I'm going to pick this one. I'm gonna pick we're gonna go with the side base one. Yeah. Side base is it. Um we're gonna uninstall the Axios thing. Um, I think the difference is Sidebase got started, I think, before uh, they made the decision to um, um, what am I saying? Yeah, auth core is a, new, a, very, a fairly new development. Um, and I think eventually they will have a module for Nux, they'll have a module for many other things, but right now they don't. And I think Sidebase basically uh, wanted to use next auth, but they're not using core, they're actually using the next auth library, but they've just wrapped it in a way that it'll work with Nux. Yeah, so they're trying to make it framework agnostic, but um, uh, it's still experimental. Um, so the thing to note about the side base one um, is it's using Next.js under the hood, uh, Next.js auth, which means that technically it's um, it's uh, more supported. <laughs> like there's more, there's less bugs. It is. It's not using an experimental library. Um, but okay, so I uninstalled dependencies. Um, we're going to use Nuxt auth now. Here we go. Or a side base Nuxt auth. Install this as a development dependency. Yeah, I agree with that, Mito. Like, I think it's, um, uh, it's, it's the way things should be, right? So, like, you have really good community-supported packages that are agnostic, and then you have adapters that work with the various frameworks. So, yeah. And yeah, I mean, yeah, you know my feeling, Canola. <laughs> that's, that's why we're doing this is like, yeah. And what's up, Andreas? Welcome in. Uh, the difference between Sidebase Auth and Auth.js. Uh, Sidebase is not official, and it wraps Next.js Auth. Auth.js is an attempt to rewrite Next.js Auth as a framework agnostic, agnostic library. Um, did that make sense? Okay, we installed, we installed it. Quick start. Um, we're going to add it as a module in the Nux config. And then we create an auth handler. So um, this is the, the other, uh, so here's your, here's your next Nux concept. You can create a folder called server, and this will have server-specific code. So one of the aspects of a full-stack framework that lets you do front-end things and back-end things is sometimes you want to make sure that this certain things only run on the back-end. And in the server folder, that's how you do that. So you can create API routes. Uh, this wants us to create a, an API folder. And then inside of that API folder, we need to create an auth folder. And then inside of that auth folder, we need to create a file uh, called dot, 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 ts. So this will basically uh, take in any request f f to something that begins with API slash auth. Um, so we're we're using Daisy UI, which is based on top of of Tailwind, um, but a lot of the classes look do look similar to uh, Bootstrap. Okay. We need this, but we're we're gonna add the GitHub provider. Here we go. Here we go. This is this is um. This is where things get get dicey, uh, and this is where we had issues last time. Um, Nux auth handler. 
Is it just off? Next off? What's up with this, uh, this, this hashtag here? <laughs> uh, the hash, the hash should be there. But what does it mean? Can't find module auth. Is this a Nuxt thing? I've, n I've never seen that before. Um... Hey, what's up, America 2050? Did you say... Oh, you said, let's go Argentina. Uh, is the World Cup still happening? A virtual package. I guess I'll just leave it. Um, and then I want providers slash Google. But why is this complaining? Should be listed in the project's dependencies. I'm just going to disable this rule uh, globally. Cool. It's an alias for at Nuxt. I think my ESLint config doesn't know about that, Vin. I'll leave it, but I don't like it. <laughs> um, okay, so we have this Google provider. We need to pass in the client ID in secret. Um, something like this, but we'll have to get those from the environment variables. So we'll look in the, nu the Nux docs how to deal with environment variables, um, like this. Um, using the .env file. The example below shows how to search a public API base URL and secret API token. Yeah, exactly. And that's one of the reasons we want to use their uh, their way of doing it because uh, the, the specifically the Google client secret, you do not want that to be exposed in client side code. So these environment variables um, should only be um, accessible on the server side. Um, accessing the runtime config. Happy holidays, Mary Jo, welcome in. Um, sharing is caring, I mean, these need to be hidden. Now, what if I want to use environment variables not inside of a component? In this case, I'm just um, in a TypeScript file. Any environment variables set with the .env are accessed using process.env and then uxdap during development and build and generate. In production, you should use platform environment variables and .env is not used. Okay, I thought it had like a custom loader. Oh well. Um, like, I thought there was like a way to like statically type it or something like that. How do I make a framework so unpleasant? <laughs> Me or the or 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 the the creators? Who are you talking about, Terawatt? Yeah, I I do think I I do need to do this. So, in my runtime config, I think that's where I'll all access process.env. I think that, that seems like the way to go. Um, so 
So we have our runtime config, and then we can say um, Google client ID. Google client secret, like this. So now that I've done that, um, we can use the runtime config over here. Again, this is another one of those just magic variables that are available to me. But this should be automatically typed. Because um, then I can do app dot. Well, maybe not. <laughs> What's up, RT? Yeah, I, I collabed with Coding Train a while back. Um, restart. Yeah, let me just let me just reload the window. And also, uh, I think the the dev server needs to be running so these types get generated. Um, and then we will reload VS Code. There we go. So those are available to me, and I do get type completion now that I've added them. All right. Um, named export next auth handler not found. Well, that's not good. Is there a, another way to import this? Um, I'm on a Mac OS Monterey. Um, it can't find this import. Did we miss anything in the installation? So we installed the dependency. We added it to our modules. I mean, that's, I think I tried that, but that, it didn't work. Well, maybe it is the um, side base nuxed off. <laughs> okay. Um, Yeah, so it's it's in the Nux config. No, that's just a Nux module. That is not the uh, Nuxed off handler. I just I just <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I think somebody mentioned this is an alias. This uh, hash, but uh, can I not use the alias? How how how? Source runtime server services index. Well, there's, I mean, there's no, there's no runtime. Oh, there it is. Runtime server services. There we go. We found it. Whew. Okay. Let's see if the, we get this error goes away. Um, I 
I will click the links that you send me. Some of them, anyways. <laughs> do 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 do. Um. Server API auth here. Yeah, I mean, they're doing the same thing, but I'm just getting an error on that import. That's the main issue. Um, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm here. I'm already here. here. I appreciate the links, but uh, we, we don't have any new information. So uh, when I do that, it all of a sudden just works? No, 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 no. OK, we're, getting, we're, st we're still getting an error. Um, Named export not found. The requested module is a common JS module, which may not support all module.exports as named exports. OK. That's, that seems fine. Um, Yeah, that's what we'll do. That's the winner. It's possibly a node version issue. Um, I changed the code, and I saved the file. Off. Oh, this is an error in their package. Yeah. Okay. Um. We're stuck here until we resolve this. I guess it could it could be a Node version issue. Honestly, I am so I'm using Node version 16. Um, what's the, what's the latest, or at least the the 80, the well isn't 16 the LTS? 18 is now the LD, LTS. Um, yeah, and then we're using version 18. And then can I do a clean install with version 18 dependencies? I didn't do the uh, post install. Did it tell me to do that anywhere? I mean, the main reason I'm using version 16 is because of Electron. Um, I honestly haven't tested to see if they fixed the bug that required it to be it, that, that was broken in version 18. Um, all right, let's see, let's see what happens. Cannot find package next auth. You know what? Maybe, maybe I do need to remove the generated files. Like, so dot, the dot next folder um, is auto generated, and now that I change to Node version eighteen, maybe I need to do this. Nuxy clean, Nuxy prepare. <laughs> so I've never used that. Let's see. I guess I'll just install this as a dependency, but this is really weird that we're getting this error. Cool. <laughs> is this the point where we, we stop trying to use this library? Um, I think it is. 
Um, yes, yes, this is the point. But why? Why? Why can't it just work? Like, why? 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 Why is this not a priority in an ecosystem to have like a full featured auth library? Let's do Nuxy prepare. I'll do it. Um, Yeah, it still can't find that package. Named export not found. Yeah, um, let's just see what this is. Well, I think the other issue is... Um, Is, first of all, is there an issue on GitHub? Because I can't be the first person that's coming across this, right? Um, let's see what version I have. Um, Zero point three. That is the latest version. Yeah, so I already installed next auth. Right now the issue we're getting is that it can't find this named export next auth handler, but that's not even in my code. Cause in my code, um, I am importing star as auth, but then eventually it gets to a point where in the code that I'm importing, it's trying to find that, that specific export. And uh, this is what's failing. But again, let's just see if there's an issue on the repo right now. Yeah, we tried that on Saturday and, and we actually ran into issues. So like uh, setting up the library was fine, but they have uh, the next auth with SvelteKit uh, auth core right now uh, has an issue with open ID providers, which is what Google is. <sighs> What's the error we're getting? Named export not found. Oh no, so okay, the recent version of next auth ha potentially has issues. Lock next auth to 4.18. Okay. Okay, I can try that. Um, I clicked the wrong button. That's what happened with the stream before. Um, all right. I'm going to lock. If this version doesn't work, work, work I'm going to leave. <laughs> I, I just don't have it in me. And uh, I'm going to go do other things. But uh, we're locking to 4.18.0. And so to lock a dependency, you just remove that little caret. And so now it'll only install that version. And not a rage quit, a casual giving up and, and <laughs> casual casual loss of um, motivation. Um, we're getting past the main point. Yeah, yeah, and so that's the I mean, so if you're if you're just joining us and not like the, the bigger picture is we want to choose something because we're gonna we wanna work in, in a framework in an ecosystem that is fairly stable and doesn't require us to do these kinds of like weird workarounds and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Okay. So we've locked the version. Let's see if this, if this doesn't fix it, then we might have to lock the version of the dependency. Great. That, that worked. That worked. <laughs> this is the exact opposite of production. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, already, like, the fact that we have to lock a dependency, this is all, this is already 4 out of 10. We'll see from, from this point on uh, if we can actually get it configured. So that fixed it. 
that fixed it. Now, uh, let's try signing in. And also, uh, you can see in the console, it's complaining about not having an auth secret. Um, let me grab an auth secret. So um, if we look in our SvelteKit app, uh, you lock versions for productions anyway? Sure, sure. Let's just assume we're doing it on purpose because, <laughs> because of production. Um, cool. So what's nice is our database is set up to use next auth because we, we set up our database when we were using SvelteKit with auth core. So technically our database is exactly uh, set up the way that we need it to be. Uh, we should just be able to integrate it now with this, uh, this, this thing. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm setting all of my environment variables right now. I've got my Google client ID, my Google client secret, and then um, next JS auth has, uh, makes you create an environment variable called auth secret, and it uses that to, to sign things. Um, so that is what I'm setting up right now. What was I doing? Oh yeah, this. <laughs> you lock because of production and not because the package doesn't work. I agree with that. I think we're just being a little tongue in cheek right now. Um, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um, Yeah, I'll, I'll push this code up because I guess I didn't I didn't push the code last time. Um, so here we are. Um, the other thing is, so this this Nuxt auth library by Sidebase is just a wrapper around Next.js auth. Um, this one, it's a wrapper around this one, which means we should follow a similar getting started. Um, as we do for next auth. And, and um, if you look in like uh, configuration and like for the database, I, I do believe, and I guess adapters, they tell us what the schema should be for Prisma. So, uh, and this is, this is also what I mean by um, um, full featured is in that like I set my database up this way. I have an account, a session, user, verification token tables. These tables are, are pre-set up in in our, our SQL database. And now uh, next auth will automatically integrate with that. In this case, um, uh, sidebase auth will automatically integrate with that. So uh, let's try logging in um, on the home page. So one thing I'll do is in the nav bar, We'll figure out a way to put a button on the end. Um, it just says log in. And then when you click this, um, we'll say log in. And then we just need a script here that has a language of TS and a, um, a script type setup, and then imports sign in. So, and then when we click the button, we'll call sign in. Um, we do need to give this a type of button. My env key needs a nuxt prefix. We'll see. We'll see if it throws an, <laughs> see if it throws an error. Um, if we look at Daisy UI, how can I get myself a nice little red button? Uh, button error? Yeah. Um, great. I want to put that login button on the right hand side. Let's see if their nav bar has support for that, or we could just turn it into a flex box if they don't have anything that does that button of type button. Yeah. I think it's an accessibility thing. <laughs> um, yeah, they literally just make it a flex box. 
Flex one, flex none. There we go. Login button on the right hand side. I guess this is the moment of truth. Is my app even running? It's running. Okay. I'm going to click this login button, but I'm also going to hide my screen just in case anything uh, happens that I don't want to leak. Um, oh, no, 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 no origin supply. That's, that's fine. It's actually pretty cool that it generates this UI that says sign in with Google. But what I need to do in my code is when I call sign in, I need to pass in Google because I want to use the Google provider that I set up right here. So now I'll try that. Yeah, uh, I'm getting an error that client ID is required. That just means that my environment variables didn't load for some reason, so I need to debug that now. Um, yeah, well, thank you, Ver Veritatis has it. Like, basically, these two things are not what I'm expecting, um, and that is that might mean that I need to add nuxt underscore, yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, let's see in their .env. Yeah. Um... Cool. And Harasuna, thank you very much for the prime. Hey there. Hey there. Welcome in. Okay. Let me put Nuxt on my environment variables. Let's see what happens. And Carabel, thank you for that prime sub as well. I appreciate that. Hey, we got redirected. Okay. So we're over here at Google. I can say sign in. We get redirected back. Awesome. Now let's integrate it to the database. Um, no secret supplied. Supplying a secret will be necessary for production. Set the secret in Nuxt auth handler. Okay, so it's not actually using the one that I thought it would use, like from Next.js. So let's do this. Let's create an auth secret variable that is process.env.auth secret, and we'll pass that in. Um, not too bad. I mean, at least at least the flow happened. Now we'll see if we can integrate to the database. Um, Okay, so that gets added there, um, and then I do believe there should be a, yeah, there's a secret, and then this is going to be runtime config dot uh, auth secret, like that. Um, let's restart it. Setting up Tailwind with SAS with Remix. I'm not using SAS, though. JWT session error. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, because because now that I set the secret, uh, there's like a cookie set. Um, and that would have had an issue because um, it was set with a different secret. Let's see. No origin supplied. Supplying an origin will be necessary for production. I guess we'll do that too. Let's fix all of these errors in the console before before we move on. Um, let's just create origin. And then I'll add that to my to my .env. And then right here, origin is runtime config dot origin. Like that. And give me a second. Uh, and in this case, origin is just localhost 3000.
Well, you can see all of you can see all of the uh, the other things. Okay, uh, never mind. It needs auth then origin. So this is auth, and then inside of that is an origin property. Oh, in your Nux config, I see. This actually goes over here. And then we need to use the runtime config in the, can you use the runtime config in the next config? No, you can't. Uh, we'll just use the environment variable. There we go. That's what I like to see. Okay, all the, all the errors are gone. Now let's try to integrate the database. So like the, the login flow, uh, Client ID is required. What? What? <laughs> wait, wait, you're saying that was fast for me to break things? Let me double check my dot env. Um, Cannot see my .dotty .dotty file. No, okay. Um, apparently, it's not liking um, auth origin. Let's see real quick. Man, I changed nothing. I don't know why it can't find the client ID now. Yeah, I've had issues with the plugins that auto hide my environment variables. So I don't even I don't even try to risk it. Google client ID. Those properties are just stripped from my, um, from my config. Why? Let me do that, uh, uh, Nuxy prepare thing. What is happening is I am slowly drifting into uh, madness. It, it just, it stopped loading the Google client ID in, in Google client secret. Um, they're, they're listed in my config. Uh, If you create an empty key in the config, it gets replaced. Um, I guess do... <sighs> yeah, hard code it. I mean, I don't think I need to put the word nuxt on there, do I? Because I, I didn't do it before and it worked. 
that's what's baffling to me. What's baffling is that it worked before, and then all of a sudden, yeah. So I changed it to put Nux on there instead. That pulls them in, but it worked without that before, which is crazy. Okay. Um, yeah, honestly, I think that's what we're realizing, Terawatt, is that like Next.js is a very mature framework with a very mature ecosystem <laughs> that where things just work as you expect them to. Um, so. Yeah, okay, it's working again. I think anyways. Let's try it. Okay. Let me double check. There's not any um, secrets being shown on my screen. There, there are. Whew. Whew. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, like, I'm not frustrated with Nux right now. I'm more so frustrated with the library that we're trying to add to it. Right? Right? Okay. Uh, well, we couldn't use the Nux off module because it didn't support Nux 3. And then the only thing we could do was use the one that rewrote the Nux off module. But I made the decision to use this one because it uses Next.js auth, which is more similar to what we were doing with SvelteKit. I don't know. Okay. Um, can we add an adapter? Um, so, like, if you look at the the Next.js configuration, or no, is it provider adapter? Uh, yeah, they have an adapter section where they can pass in a, uh, a database adapter. So let's try to do it. And then do we just add the next auth Prisma adapter? Let's try it. Cause I, I don't think I see anything in their docs. Um, database adapter should be used in more. Yeah, so this just links us over to the Next.js documentation. So I think at this point we just treat it like it's Next.js auth. Um, so we're gonna add the Prisma adapter and then uh, add it in here. So we pull in the Prisma adapter. Um, we say Prisma adapter with the Prisma client, which we import from our mono repo. Um, so we'll import uh, Prisma client from DB. So DB is just our uh, Prisma client library that um, uh, is we, we defined in the mono repo. So we can we can add DB as a dependency here, and that should pull in that dependency from um, the mono repo package. But one thing we do need to do, I think, because I like reinstalled dependencies. Uh, let me make sure I'm not displaying anything. Um, is I need to do Prisma generate um, to generate the, the types packages db npx Prisma generate. Remix, so if you check the, yeah, so those of you that are curious about what we're going to be doing and when, check the schedule because tomorrow is Remix. Tomorrow the plan is to use Remix. Um, I have high hopes for Rebix. I don't know why I'm so uh, I'm just avoiding Next.js so much. I've used Next.js before. I don't know. I don't know. But I have high hopes for Remix. <laughs> We're gonna do that tomorrow. Uh, all right. So we got our Prisma client generated. This hopefully uh, extension host cannot start version mismatch. Why? <laughs> Great. 
Though it's complaining about this. Cannot find module DB. It should be able to find module DB. Um, if it can't, we'll fix it, because that's what we do. <laughs> Our job is to fix things. Um, DB is imported, but could not be resolved, treating it as an external dependency. Cannot find package DB. OK, this is the tricky part. Nuxt is inside of Turbo Repo, and it's doing this automatic generation stuff. And uh, it doesn't know how to get our um, library. I mean, honestly, I could just relative path import it, right? Uh, so last time when we were working with SvelteKit, we didn't have to do anything special. I, j I did what I just did now. All I did was add it as a dependency, and then I could import it. No, nothing special. Yeah, so I put it in package.json, but go up a directory, up a directory, up directory, up a directory, up a Why am I not getting autocomplete? Turbo install, is that a thing? Um, I'm happy to run it. Let's find that in the docs. Um, package installation. Internal packages. Uh, so we made the directory for the DB. It has its own package.json. Maybe we need to reinstall its dependencies. There was an npm package dash dash workspace. You're now going to import the package. Go into your apps, add this to the dependencies. We've done this, and then import it. So yeah, this is this is what I did. There's no like in command to install it. Um, well, and again, the main issue like it's not Nuxt isn't the issue. It's the the ecosystem. Like there's there's not a a uh, an off library for for Nuxt yet. Um, working with Next.js be like. Do I need sound for this? Is something going to happen? <laughs> I'm not gonna let it finish. It's making me, uh, it's making me nervous. Oh, the other, I see, you outpaced Svelte. Is that all that was? I get really nervous that like something weird's gonna happen in the, like somebody's gonna crash or something. I don't know. Um, okay, uh, so I read installed dependencies here. I don't know if that maybe would fix it. I've never seen that video before. I don't. I don't know the meme. It found it. It found it. Okay. I think I just needed to do an npm install in that folder. Great. Great. I'm just old. <laughs> So it started up. We added the Prisma adapter. Our database uh, over here 
uh, has the tables ready to go. So we've got ourselves uh, a user table, an account table, a session table, a verification table. We have all the tables required. With the adapter, it should just put the user in the database. Um, let's see. Error. Let me look at the console. <laughs> you truly become free. No, it's a different error than Svelte. So it's actually made it to the database insert. Um, but it's saying the session table does not exist in the current database. But it does. Oh no, it doesn't. <laughs> I need I need to run I need to run the migrations against the database. I think that's the issue. Okay, give me give me a second. Let me do that. Okay, the database is now in sync. I forgot that I, I deleted and recreated that SQLite file because I didn't want anything from when we were working with SvelteKit to interfere with it. Log it. Me. No error. Let's check Prisma Studio. Um, uh, I think it's it's either red or brown switches. Exclamation mark keyboard. And look at this. We've got a user in the database, an account, and a session. It's working. So they're in the database, and now we can we can use. Um, the provided like session variables and stuff like that. Um, so data dot value has session data in use session. Um, so over in our layout that has the nav bar, took us thirty. Yeah, it took us thirty minutes to do. Um, uh, we can now also get access to data, which gives us a user that has a name and email and an image. Cool. Um, and I think this is uh, possibly null. So what we'll do is um, if data.user is a thing, uh, we're going to have like a little user avatar with the image. And then uh, otherwise, show the login button. So uh, let's go to Daisy UI. Uh, and I think they have like, I'm pretty sure they have an avatar component. Yeah, like this. Um, something like this. Full off flow in 30, I mean, it would have been sooner if I didn't have so many like NPM issues, but that's what I'm saying. Like that's how easy off flow should be to in this day and age. Um, uh, um, because packages like th this is something we do so often. Um, it should it should just be it should just it should just work. It should just work. So the the alt image the alt tag for the image is just going to be uh, data dot user dot a name. And then the source of the image um, is going to be data.user.image, like that. All right, why is this complaining? String null or undefined is not assignable to type string or undefined. I mean, I, OK. There we go. So we should get a little avatar. I also, I want it rounded. 
Yeah, avatar rounded. So we do rounded full. Cool. Um, there I am. Look at me. <laughs> I'm going to look in my database really quick to see if the image is there. Um, Yeah, it sh it should be me. I'm curious why it's not loading. Let me let me debug that. Um, shouldn't be a cores issue because it's. I mean, it's a. Uh, it's just an image image. Forbidden. Uh, and our pets, thank you very much for the, the three months. That's awesome. That's me. Okay. Uh, I want to end stream now. Um, you all are great. Uh, tune in tomorrow for Remix. Let's go on a raid. Grab the, uh, the raid messages over here. Um, if you are a sub, uh, <laughs> use that raid message. If you're not a sub, use that raid message. Check the schedule. I will be live tomorrow. We're going to work in Remix. Hopefully, it's a bit easier. Uh, <laughs> I've been live for, from before this. Um, uh, I'll push the code in a little bit, yeah. And uh, just just check the coding garden GitHub. Um, uh, you'll you'll get a uh, you can go to the repo there. Um, let's go on a raid. Thank you everyone for tuning in. This was a little bit frustrating. Honestly, there's things happening that I can't talk about, which is also making me uh, want to end the stream right now. Um, uh, but wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this. Mm -hmm.